Hey everybody, it's Eduan here from Tunnel Vision TV and today I'm going to show you guys how to use RealFlow and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to go from 3ds Max to RealFlow and then back to 3ds Max. Uh, so yeah, let's just jump in. Um, here I'm in 3ds Max, I'm using 2012 and I'm just going to create a very simple scene that we're going to be using um, for our RealFlow simulation. So I'm just going to create a very simple box and I'm going to convert that to a editable poly and let's just do some extrusion here move that down a bit and let's scale that in just to form like a kind of box shape um, that we'll be using to create some uh, liquid simulation with right so next up I'm just going to change the pivot point so we're going to go to effect pivot hierarchy effect pivot only and let's just look from the side, I think left, there we go. And let's just move the pivot point right to the corner. And let's go back to perspective view. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna enable the auto key. And let's go forward to around 50. And let's just rotate this box maybe upwards and then maybe down again. All right, let's just switch off auto key. And if we play through this, we'll have a very simple animation. There we go. Cool. And maybe let's create a surface as well. So I'm just going to create another box, a little bit bigger, like that, so that we have something that the liquid can actually fall on. Let's just move it a little, little bit this way. All right, so there we go. Okay, so next up we need to export this scene so that we can actually use it in RealFlow. So in 3ds Max, I'm going to click on RealFlow at the top and then SD file export settings. And I'm going to leave everything default. You want to um, export your entire scene, blah, blah, blah. And click on the browse button and then go to your folder where you want to save everything. I've created two folders, 3ds Max and RealFlow. And in 3ds Max, I'm just going to, uh, let's just delete this old one. I'm going to call it scene and it will have an extension SD, click on save, yes, and then export and that will export your scene as a SD file. All right, so let's go into RealFlow. This is RealFlow 2014 and before you create a new project, very importantly, go to file and then preferences and make sure your geometry scale is set to 0.1. Uh, this is really important if you're coming from 3ds Max, um, if you're using Maya and uh, Cinema 4D, you just need to Google and find out what the geometry scale um, relationship or ratio is between these two applications. But both for 3ds Max 2012, um, 0.1 works very well. Uh, once you've set that, click on File, New Project, and we're also going to browse and just put that in the same location. <clears throat> okay, and then you're going to give it a name, so let's just call this tutorial, and then click on create a new project. Alright, so next up we want to import our scene that we've exported from 3ds Max. So you're going to go to import at the top and click on object, and then browse to that folder and open the scene.sd. There we go. Okay, so now we've got our geometry or our, our scene from 3ds Max in here. And if we scrub through this, you'll see it's got the animation and everything. Now, as you can see, uh, RealFlow by default, um, by default, it will actually have 200 frames for your scene. So we need to change that because we only exported 100 frames. So right here at the bottom, you can change this 200 to 100. Press enter and that will update your scene duration. Okay, next up we're going to add some uh, gravity, so click on demons, gravity, and it's going to create a gravity uh, little node for you, and you can just put that anywhere, it doesn't really matter. And what you can also do is, if you highlight your geometry, you can click here on the side on this little grey ball, and it will just give it some, some basic texturing. Okay, so if we move around, you can see it's like an empty box, and a plane, or another box. And now we're just going to create some particles. Okay, so we're going to go to liquid particles and I'm just going to use a circle emitter and move it where you want it to be. 
there we go I think that should be fine and then we're going to click on simulate here at the bottom to simulate our liquid simulation right so our simulation is complete you can now play through it and see if it's actually doing what it's supposed to do and it's a very very simple simulation what we're doing here but obviously just for this tutorial so okay next up we will need to create some sort of mesh that we can actually export from RealFlow back into 3ds max so we're going to go to our mesh tab here at the top and we're going to click on particle mesh this first button here and you'll see it's going to create a particle mesh node here in your node view um, that's going to be connected to your particle emitter so what you need to do is you need to highlight this particle mesh make sure you're on the first frame and yeah highlight that make sure you're on the first frame and then you click on build mesh um, from the current frame to the end of the timeline so i'm going to do that now and you'll see it's actually going to go through all the frames again it's going to flash green that means it's actually building some geometry um, that we're going to import into 3ds max to use there right so once that's done we're going to go back to 3ds max um, and in 3ds max very simply you're going to go to the real flow tab and you're going to click on create bin mesh object and then we're going to browse to our real flow folder where we created it and go to the meshes uh, folder in there and then just highlight the first zero um, dot bin file and then click on open and that's basically going to um, load our geometry in and if we scrub through there we go really awesome stuff so now I've got our 3D geometry in 3ds max that you can obviously add some materials to um, let's just add some very basic uh, materials to this so I can show you guys how it looks like so I'm just going to change my renderer to V-Ray because that's just the most awesome renderer out there and then we're going to go to lights and I'm going to create a V-Ray light uh, let's just do like a very simple lighting setup here um, yeah, just something like that okay and maybe let's just move this up a little bit okay there we go and I'm gonna open my material editor and let's create a V-Ray material and I'm gonna enable the background okay so for the liquid um, I'm gonna change the diffuse to black and the reflection uh, or the reflect I'm just gonna change to um, like almost halfway and for refract I'm gonna make that like almost all the way to white kind of year and then also change your subdivisions for refract to let's just change it to 16 for now that should be fine same for reflect also 16 and let's just connect that to our liquid okay and let's just create some basic material uh, for the box and also for the uh, for the floor so for this one um, let's see sorry double click on this one first diffuse and let's change this to like a dark green maybe mm, something like that let's connect that to the box and let's create another one for the for the floor okay let's make this one blue Okay, connect that to the floor and let's do a simple render let's just change the resolution 1080p and also another thing that you want to enable is your GI or your indirect illumination and let's just position that and zoom in here and let's do a test render and see how it looks like okay and there you go as you can see it's actually not looking too bad um, liquid is looking really cool um, obviously it's very very low resolution 
Um, and before I end this tutorial, let me quickly show you if you want to do a very, very high resolution uh, liquid simulation um, in real flow. All you need to do is if you highlight your um, particle emitter you'll see there's a resolution um, setting you on the side or parameter and by default that's set to one which is obviously very very low um, once you're happy with your simulation and you're ready to render a very high quality simulation you need to up this resolution so um, yeah, I'll set it on 25 or 50 maybe to test it out. It's going to take a lot longer to, to simulate that. And also you need to build your mesh again, same method. Um, but yeah, some people maybe, um, if you have a lot of um, CPU power, you can up that to a thousand even. It's going to take very long, but it's going to look very good. Um, and then you just bring that into max and you'll have like a very high resolution liquid simulation. Right, guys uh, thanks for watching um, I will really appreciate if you do click on the subscribe button it helps me a lot uh, the more subscribers I get the more videos I can do so yeah thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys next time